So over the past couple weeks while discussing the Expanse, we focused a lot on the Canterbury and its shuttlecraft, the Knight, but we haven't really delved into the impact the Canterbury and its destruction had on the rest of the system. So I figured today we could take a closer look at the effects of the destruction of the Cant. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So, as many of us know, the Canterbury was destroyed while responding to a distress signal from the Scopuli. The crew of the Knight was dispatched from the Canterbury as a sort of boarding party to investigate the distress signal they were receiving from the Scopuli. However, while this away team was on board the Scopuli investigating the mysterious wreckage of this seemingly abandoned vessel, the Canterbury was attacked by a cloaked stealth vessel the Anubis, an Amun-Ra-class stealth ship. A salvo of three torpedoes were fired from the Anubis against the Canterbury, all of which struck the Canterbury, and it seems like these torpedoes were nuclear-armed. The destruction of the Canterbury, though, had a much wider effect than the debris field it left behind. To understand why the destruction of the Canterbury was so significant, particularly to the people of the Belt, we have to understand what the Canterbury was. The Canterbury was a very large ice hauler that would haul the raw ice into Ceres to be converted to water. Some of that water would be used by the people of Ceres, while a larger portion of it would be shipped inward to facilitate operations on Earth and Mars. Ultimately, the Canterbury would be basically the lifeline for Ceres Station, one of the biggest and most populated centers within the belt. And it's worth noting that there aren't a lot of ice haulers like the Cant. Many of them are much smaller and much less capable, and when we look at something the scale of the Canterbury, which was a thousand meters long, there's only a handful of vessels in a similar category, and ultimately Ceres only receives one to two of them every week or so. So the loss of one, especially during the strict water rationings we were seeing at the time, was a very significant impact on the daily lives of the people living on Ceres. But on top of that, there was this sentiment of already existing OPA sympathies among Belter populations. There was this general idea across the Belt that their labor and their resources were ultimately being used to benefit others on the inner worlds like Earth and Mars. There were many in the Belt that believed that the Belt should at least be getting fair compensation for the resources taken by the inner planets, and there were those in the Belt that believed that they shouldn't be supplying resources to the inner planets at all. This led to a remarkably tense political environment that just needed a spark to set it off. That's where the Canterbury comes in. With already restrict water rationings, the destruction of the Canterbury and the loss of its ice hull that it was bringing in significantly impacted the water supplies on Ceres. But it was more than just the ice that she had on board. The loss of one of these large ice haulers left a massive gap in the schedule of ice coming into Ceres. Basically, say they had three large ice haulers that would regularly deliver ice that would come once a week, now there would have to be a gap week without one of these large ice haulers functioning. Furthermore, adding fuel to this fire was the transmission sent by James Holden when he believed that this attack was carried out by Mars. This led a lot of the people of the Belt to blame the inner worlds not just for their water rationings and the other political issues that they were experiencing at the time, but for the destruction of the Canterbury, which directly affected their lives and made the problems that they were facing significantly worse. Ultimately, the Canterbury and the transmission by James Holden, which he transmitted from on board the night, would be the spark that ignited the powder keg that already existed. The destruction of the Canterbury would remain this rallying call for OPA factions for probably decades to come. It was a perfect example of how the inner planets had basically walked all over the belt and taken advantage of them. This seemed to be a very deliberate attack by Mars against Ceres' lifeline, the ice coming in from the outer worlds. And this rallying cry would become the basis of a large-scale OPA revolution that would start with riots in the streets on Ceres and ultimately lead to the rise of Marco Anaros and the Free Navy. And on top of that, the confusion surrounding the destruction of the Canterbury led Earth and Mars to the brink of war with each other, a war that would eventually come to pass. 
All in all, the Canterbury's destruction was one of the most impactful events in the history of the system. It led to not one, but two major wars and began to unravel the sort of political state the system was in. And if you'd like to learn more about the design and the history of the Canterbury itself, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think it makes sense for the destruction of the Canterbury to have sparked such political change. Do you think it makes sense for the destruction of a single hauler, even if it's one of only a few, uh, to spark several major wars in between various powers across the system? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in The Expanse, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.